collective constructionism, opening a new can of worms in the mobile social era. This video will describe one of my mobile learning projects, SMILE. SMILE stands for Stanford Mobile Inquiry-Based Learning Environment, and it involves mobile devices, network, and pedagogy. SMILE is a work of Stanford University research team and Seas of Empowerment, a 501c3 NGO volunteers around the world. It is a project in progress and need your feedback to enhance the overall model. Here is why I started this project. There is a teaching model that is widely believed to be the most efficient and convenient and it is the mostly used model in public education systems around the world. This model simply involves teachers explaining everything while students are memorizing what they hear in order to be tested later. This model is based on instructionism. Instructionism. There are times when we have to explain things, but if that is the only thing happening in public school classrooms, that is a huge waste of students' talents, in my opinion. How about their creativity, critical thinking, problem solving, synthesizing and analyzing, evaluating and presenting capabilities of the students. These are seriously untapped resources in current school systems. Also, these are, in my opinion, increasingly important competencies now and more so in the future. Unfortunately, I often hear that teachers don't have time for these. This is why I wanted to come up with a new pedagogical model that enables students to become creator, critical thinker, problem solver, evaluator, while leveraging the 21st century communication media and technology. As the name SMILE suggests, it is an inquiry-based learning environment. In my opinion, inquiries drive knowledge creation and advancement. More knowledge leads to newer, more useful inquiries. A set of possible answers to a question like this would be very different from the set of answers we will have in the year 2050. Because I believe knowledge about diseases and human bodies will continue to advance and evolve, the set of answers to a question like this has definitely evolved throughout our human history. I cannot imagine a society that is not continuously making inquiries or not responding to an inquiry. As a human, we have curiosities and questions. When we are curious about something and when we have a burning question, we want to find out the truth and we want the answer. That is the human nature and that is the best motivation to learn and advance our knowledge. What do we do in our schools? We show questions and answers to students to memorize. If they don't understand, we explain why one of the options is the correct answer. Someone picked up a topic and thought it would be important for students to know and came up with a simple recall question like this. In order to present only one possible answer, someone did research and also took considerable amount of time to make wrong or tricky answers as well. First of all, why isn't student doing the research? Why isn't student coming up with questions and tricky choices? Why do we take away the opportunity of real learning from students? We need a pedagogical paradigm shift in education, and we need it now. I want to see students conducting research. I want students exchanging inquiries. I want teachers to be facilitating such processes as a subject matter expert. We envision a change in student-teacher interaction such that students are not just the center of their learning, they are the active agents of it. I believe I'm taking a very small step towards such paradigm shift. I believe SMILE, if introduced and implemented as intended, it can be a powerful learning environment. I have seen it in over 22 countries from elementary school classrooms to graduate school classrooms. SMILE consists of open source mobile applications and mobile interaction management server. 
In SMILE, teachers are content experts and facilitators. Students freely ask questions based on their own curiosities and personal experiences. We believe mobile devices are perfect tools to make a difference in both developing and developed countries. Here is how SMILE works. Students use mobile devices to make questions. They share their questions with their peers. They all solve each other's questions and rate them. They reflect on their findings. And students can make questions by collaborating in teams. And they can compete against other teams to create higher ranking questions. Therefore, it creates a team-based game atmosphere. This picture is from a South Korean medical university classroom using tablet PCs to engage in SMILE. These are pictures from a SMILE session. One of the left is the Global SMILE application with the internet access. With Global SMILE, students can exchange questions and reflect on them globally. This picture on the right is a screenshot of ad hoc SMILE, which is used to run SMILE workshops in developing regions without internet access. This option involves either a conventional notebook computer or a small form factor SMILE plug running as an interaction management and content repository server and mobile devices. With SMILE, students can make questions by incorporating mobile media and share them with peers or solve them and rate the question quality. Various learning analytics are gathered and presented to all participants. Depending on teachers' preferences, SMILE could be run in multiple ways. First, students can come up with inquiries and also possible responses all by individual or team. Or, an individual or one team can make questions, but have another individual or team try to come up with possible answer choices by doing research. After that, all students can solve and rate all questions together. SMILE is subject independent, meaning any subject at any level can use SMILE. So far, SMILE has been used by from second grade elementary language art classes all the way to graduate level courses and medical university classes. All questions gathered by students are used as learning objects, discussion stimuli, and evaluation vectors. These are pictures from one of Bay Area's fifth grade science classes. Students took pictures of graphs, charts, and tables from their textbooks to make questions to share with their peers. When I asked one of the teams on why they created their question, their answer was quite profound. One student explained to me that her question is very interesting and important, but it was not in her textbook. So she created it to have her friends solve the problem. These are from a rural village school in India. They didn't have reliable electricity, so we used a car battery to power the smile plug. In this case, students' smile experience was identical to the ones in the Barry Area School. This is a picture from a rural community center in Missione province in Argentina. I asked students to come up with a question that is so hard, so I cannot solve. I told them, Whichever group comes up with the hardest question wins. They all smiled and started to make the most difficult math question they could ever come up with. This particular team first covered themselves with a butcher paper so I couldn't see them. They started to use seven or eight digit number multiplication to trick me. But they soon realized that they also need to put answer choices they sweated for a while and reduced the number of digits to smaller and smaller and finally came down to four digit multiplication problem because they verified the answer for the question a few times before they submitted the question. The most interesting matter was their level of engagement. They were motivated to compete against other groups and also collaborated within their group. This is a team of students living in Wanaraja. Indonesia peasantry school. It's an Islamic boarding school. I asked the students to come up with the hardest math question 
And this team started to draw and make a triangle theorem question. They took a picture of their own drawing and posted it for other teams to solve. Advanced questions challenged all students, and advanced students were able to solve a variety of interesting questions they usually do not see on their textbooks. This is a team of students in a southern Tanzania rural village school. They didn't have an English textbook, but they wanted to learn English. This is a seventh grade class that starts to learn everything in English. Unfortunately, buying an English textbook, even if they were available, was difficult for most of these students because they could not afford them. This particular team uh, took a picture of a water bottle and made their question, simply asking what it was in English. Within 40 minutes, 70 students in one class made more than 140 questions to be solved by their peers. I gave them a projector to be used whenever they had electricity. As shown in the picture, the teacher is projecting everyone's question along with the analytical data on the wall. Smile Server shows which question was solved correctly by how many students and which question received the highest ranking, etc. The teacher goes over interesting questions and answers to open up discussions. Also, the teacher engages the students in identifying incorrect grammar or word choice in question sentences or incorrect answers, etc. These photos are from a smart workshop at a medical school. Fourth year medical students are generating questions and a few professors also threw in some questions for the students as well. As you can see, students are adding media from internet or by taking photos from their textbooks and their own drawings. What was most striking was that the student questions when generated by teams, the questions were so profound. No one professor was able to answer all the questions. They had to assemble a panel of professors to discuss questions and possible answer choices that students have come up with. It was very interesting to watch engaging students to come up front and defend their question rationale. In one of the schools in Argentina, we asked the students to come up with questions that they believed important, not based on what they learned from their school curriculum. Students generated questions by creating a scene or acting. They generated questions on homelessness in their community. Some generated questions on depression and some about an incident that involved a student committing suicide. Some students generated questions on school bullying and also came up with their own answers they thought correct or possible. SMILE was a quite interesting tool to collect student perceptions through questions not by directly asking what they think about an issue through a survey. These images are from a medical school in South Korea. In this particular session, we asked the students to come up with own evaluation rubrics to rate their own questions. For example, multiple conceptuality, effective use of media, completeness, question clarity, were some of the criteria they developed for their own sessions. Also. The students divide their classes into two groups where one group comes up with open questions while the other group comes up with possible answer choices to complete their questions. It was quite interesting to watch how they engage their own teams in various steps of inquiry making, synthesizing, analyzing, problem solving, and evaluating. I also uh, worked with a Mexican research university, CIDE. We selected a rural village school that had single multi-grade classroom. This is their classroom where multiple grades of students study together at the same time. Since students there had very hard time coming up with questions of their own, we had them practice uh, on papers first. It took a few sessions to get them familiarized with the question making process. Also the teacher had to get used to facilitating such process because teachers there never asked students to make their own questions. When students became somewhat familiar with the question making concept, they used their mobile devices to make questions by taking pictures from their textbooks and materials in and out of classrooms. 
Some went out to take pictures of rocks, flowers, bugs, etc. to make science questions. In this particular setting, two students in each team collaborated in making questions. This is a screenshot of the SMILE server information. It clearly shows that many students solved most student problems correctly. That means most students found the peers' questions very easy. When you look at the rating though, you can see that they gave each other a very low rating. They believed that easy questions do not deserve high ratings. Interestingly, I found one team's question a little odd. I asked them to come up front and explain their question. Their question was asking what was celebrated in London in 1851 and listed Prince Albert and a few other names as possible answer choices. The team said they read something about Prince Albert in world history textbook. The teacher and I immediately noticed that the student didn't know how to spell celebra. They insisted that it must start with S. So the teacher was able to explain it and was able to correct the uh, problem there with the students. Also, we were able to pinpoint that what was celebrated in London in 1851 was not Prince Albert but it was World Exposition organized by Prince Albert, who was the husband of Queen Victoria. So we were able to straighten a few things about their misunderstandings. Within 40 minutes, we learned so much from each other, and they had a lot of fun. So they wanted to do this activity every day. So I was very happy to see that. So overall, here are the findings from SMILE workshops around the world. SMILE seems to engage students really well because of the game-like atmosphere with the technology they can easily use. Since we are using mobile devices, one can literally move from the phones from class to another class to run SMILE workshops in multiple classrooms within a school. Teachers didn't need much training other than the pedagogical training. Technology was pretty much non-issue since the teachers had mobile phones for themselves as well. In SMILE, learning and assessment take place at the same time. Teachers are no longer transmitting information here, but facilitating and verifying answers as a subject matter expert. As it has been used in numerous classrooms around the world, SMILE can be used in all levels of education. The SMILE environment is quite simple to implement and maintain, and also relatively lower cost compared to a computer lab or notebook cards. There are some challenges though. Students around the world are not used to generating questions, and they are not given enough opportunity to do so. In some cases, teachers cannot generate quality questions either. In most cases, students come up with very simple questions at first, such as, what is the capital of uh, Tanzania in the early stage? However, as they run SMILE sessions repeatedly, they change their questions to something like, why is Dar Salaam the capital of Tanzania? So they move from simple recall questions to critical thinking questions. Overall, student questions improve over time with practices. SMILE is well received in most schools because because it was quite easy to integrate into existing teaching practices and teachers were able to use SMILE for various purposes. However, here's the biggest challenge of all. I started to notice that teachers cannot effectively solve high-ranking questions that students generate in teams. If any class runs SMILE more than about 25 sessions, student questions become so profound because every time they run a new SMILE session, they compete to come up with the higher quality questions every time. SMILE can help students become better critical thinker and problem solver. But the more students become smarter, the harder for teachers to facilitate SMILE activities. I'm in the process of setting a, a SMILE consortium that will manage the open source software and invite many partners and contributors to enhance SMILE while training teachers. One of the partners is Marvell Technologies. Marvell is a company 
currently manufacturing oil PC notebooks and tablets. Marvell designed a smile plug that acts as a smile server, router, Wi-Fi in one box. I heard that the plug will be about $30. That's very interesting. Without the plug, you can still run Smile with a cheap notebook and Wi-Fi router. But the Smile plug can replace them all, and it will make Smile much more portable and easy to implement because Smile plug doesn't have any button. If you already have a computer and existing Wi-Fi in your classroom, you can also run Smile. I hope that many talents will join Smile Consortium. This way, we'll be able to generate and support a global community of educators and entrepreneurs to replicate Smiles in classrooms around the world while further enhancing it. So in conclusion, what I have learned from this project are following. Smile is a quite versatile pedagogy, promoting collective constructionism. Smile challenges not only students, but more teachers. The student questions substantially move from simple recall question types to increasingly diverse types, including critical thinking questions. Here are my predictions, which are worrisome as well. When students make questions in teams and compete to improve themselves on making more challenging questions that integrate multiple concepts and subjects, teachers will have much harder time effectively answering them. I doubt that current education model can support SMILE in the long run if student questions become more diverse and challenging for teachers. That's why I believe I have opened a new can of worms. I'm planning to run SMILE as part of teacher training efforts around the world. I'm planning to launch a robust global SMILE so people around the world can help make solve, evaluate, and discuss each other's questions. This needs connectivity everywhere. In the last UNESCO keynote that I delivered, I mentioned that connectivity has become a new human right of the 21st century. I believe it is time to cause a paradigm shift, and I think SMILE can be a small step to help cause such paradigm shift. So I need your help, and I need your innovative ideas. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.